What's up everybody, this is Ruben with Tools of Freedom and today I will be testing hollow points, 9mm versus 40 versus 45 versus 10mm, all penetration test on paper plates and ballistics gel. Let's check it out. So for the guns I'll be using is a Smith & Wesson MMP 40 caliber and this is a compact model and I'll be using Hornady ammunition. These are hollow points and these are 155 grain XTP. For 10 millimeter, I'll be using my Springfield XDM-10. I'll be using PMC Bronze, and that's those are 170 grains. For my 9 millimeter, I have a Walther PPX, and I'll be using Six Hour Elite Crown, and these are 147 grains. I don't have the box. These are my personal carry around, so I loaded all those up into magazines and different guns, so I don't have the box for that. I wasn't able to find any more. And for 45, I have the same thing, six hour elite V crown, and these are 230 grains. First up is gonna be the paper plates. I have set up 500 plates right here. I have two center blocks holding them in place so they don't roll over to the side. I have a chronograph that's a little bit busted right there. I shot it, but I think it still works. So the measurements are gonna be maybe accurate, maybe not, so we'll see with the speeds, but hopefully it's accurate and we'll, we'll put that into consideration too. First up is gonna be the 40 caliber with a Hornady XDP. And let's go. Wind around in the chamber. Hopefully this chronograph works. Yep, gave error. Next up is the 10 millimeter with the XDM-10. I have a PMC bronze. In the chamber let's load it up and we're gonna shoot somewhere in the top right well that one did read it said 1168 feet per second next up is gonna be nine millimeter with a Walther PPX I have a six hour 147 grain V crown let's load it up now we're gonna go for bottom left That one gave error, so it works when it wants to. Next up is a 45 ACP and my Ruger 1911. Six hour, 230 grain V crown hollow point. Let's load it up. And now we're gonna go for bottom right. And that one also gave error. So yeah, it doesn't work. We're just not gonna consider those readings at all. And now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the plates. They got pushed back a little bit. So this is 40, this is 10, this is nine, and this is 45. Yeah, I think that's the order. And nothing came out the back. That's good, we caught all the rounds, so let's take a look at how they did. So I went ahead and took a look at the impacts. This is 40. This is 10, this is 9, and this is 45. So we're just going to start from the top right here so it doesn't get all messed up. So I do have four holes coming out in the back. And they're still going. So remember, this is 40, 10, 9, and 45. The 45 slowing down a lot. That hole is way bigger than the others. And the 45 did not make it to 300 plates at all. It's somewhere right here. Let's take a look at the paper plates. Let me tear up this plastic. I only have three holes going onto the 300 plate mark. Let's try and dig out this 45. Here I found the 45. It's all broken up. That's some nasty expansion. It's way bigger than I thought it would be for the expansion. That's, that's good. When you're using hollow points, you don't want them to penetrate too much. It stopped at about 160 plates. So let's uh, keep on digging for these, the rest. Let's put that to the side right there. And this is 300. And it looks like only one kept going, which is the nine. We have, I see one round right there. 
Let me, let's see which one this is. I think that's the 10 millimeter. Yep, so the 10 millimeter made it the third furthest. Let's look for this 40 now. So I found the 40, the 10 went a little bit further than the 40, but not much. I wanna say about maybe 30 to 40 plates. Let's just call it the 10 went all the way through and stopped on the last plate, which is where, where I found it. And then the 40 was somewhere in there in the middle. And now for the paper plates for the nine millimeter, let's try and dig this one out. So this is the 400 stack. All right, let me dig through it. So I found the nine millimeter right here. I counted the plates. We'll just call it that this is the last plate that it went through. So it went through, I have 31 plates left over there. So it went through 369 plates. Let's take it out. Oh, I gotta chase plates now. So I got it out and this is what the nine millimeter looks like. If you had any doubts which one was gonna win? Well, now we know the nine millimeter went in the furthest. Next up is gonna be the gel block test. These are both 10% from Ballistics Gel. This is a brand new block. This one I've already shot it, melted it a couple of times. We're just gonna have it as a backstop just in case. But I think they will all stop in the first block to 16 inches. I don't have a tape measure, so we're just gonna have to eyeball it. First up is gonna be the 40 MMP Smith & Wesson with Hornady 155 grain XTP hollow points. And let's see if the chronograph can actually get a reading on it this time. 1,087. So it did get a reading. And now we're gonna take a look at the gel block and see how far it went. Oh, it almost made it all the way through. It stopped right there. So that's what, about three inches left. So let's take a look from the side. You can't really see much. I think it looks better from the top. Came in, dumped a lot of energy right there, but it kept going. So the 40 made it through about 13 inches of gel right there. That's awesome. Next up is gonna be the 10 millimeter Springfield XCM 10 with PMC bronze, 170 grains, hollow point. Now let's take another shot at this. 1,086. Wasn't that the same reading as last time? I resetted the chronograph, so that's a brand new reading. Let's take another look at the gel block. Ooh, the 10 millimeter made it all the way into the second block. Just a little bit further, that's about an inch into the second block. Well, I'm glad I did put another one. I thought that we're all gonna stop on the first one. So let's take a, the wound, look at, take a look at the wound cavity. So it came in and started dumping all its energy at about the same place, same measurement from the 40, but that wound cavity looks a little bit bigger and a little bit longer. And it penetrated about four inches more than the 40. Next up is gonna be nine millimeter with my Walter PPX, six hour Elite V Crown, 147 grains. Let's put one in the chamber. And let me actually reset this chronograph. Just have to wait for it a little bit, a couple of seconds. And it's ready. 1,135, so it is working now gonna take a look at the gels and we caught the round it's right there it stopped on the first block it made it about an inch and a half more into the block than the 40 did so that's about 15 inches or so 
Yeah, that's about an inch, an inch and a half. We'll just call it 15 inches. All right, well, then we're gonna take a look at the wound cavity. So it came in and it started dumping its energy sooner than the 40 and the 10. And that wound cavity also looks pretty big. Yeah, I think it's longer than the 40 and the 10 from what I can see, but it did stop sooner. Next up is gonna be the 45 ACP with my Ruger SR 1911. Have six hour V Crown Elite, 230 grain, hollow point. Let's put it in the chamber. And let me reset the chronograph again. I keep forgetting to do this, I'm sorry. I just want a brand new reading. I don't want it to get stuck. Seven hundred and sixty-nine. Wow, that is super slow. I'll show you the chronograph right there because that seemed very slow. But then again, it is a forty-five ACP. So that's what it's showing. So now, let's take a look at the block. Well, I can't see the round yet. Uh, what? What happened? Only half of That's a 40, that's a 9, that's a 10. I do have an entry point. Huh, this is weird. Let me investigate a little more. I had to flip the, the block. I did find the round. It was just literally right below the 9mm. So this is where it came in. This is the entry hole right there. So it comes in. It's kind of hard to follow, but it, it this one made the longest wood cavity. So it came in and started dumping most of its energy. This wood cavity is about, I wanna say eight to nine inches. That's pretty big. So it came out and it actually beat the nine by a little bit, by like half an inch. That's the 40, this is the 9, and this is the 45, and the 10 is over here. Let me dig them out and we'll take a look at the expansion. So now we're going to take a look at the rounds. This 6 hours are really impressive. This is the 45 ACP, look at that expansion. This is actually beautiful. I, lo I love looking at this. That is a pretty looking expansion. And same for the 9mm. This is what it looks like. That is beautiful. This is the 40, just kind of mushroomed out. Doesn't look as pretty as the other ones. Mushroom out pretty good. And this is the 40, the Hornady. Mushroomed out all right. But them six hour rounds, they, they spread out pretty good. I like those. I think I'm going to start carrying 45 instead, maybe. So there we have it. 9 versus 40 versus 45 versus 10. That was awesome. Seeing those expansions was actually very impressive. Uh, I was a little disappointed on the on the 10 actually for the, uh, for the paper plates. I thought I was going to go in further than the 9, but the 9 is the one that won that one. Mainly because it was probably a way faster round. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.